We were talking to Derek in studios, the Cynthia Skuman from the Ethics Monitor. You are uh, stirring waves again, Cynthia, this time the SABC. Well, I didn't stir that wave, but it's certainly been a, a significant wave that has been stirred uh, around the public protector's report on the SABC. It uh, is, is really a, a, almost a, a soap opera in itself. Now, you published an article on this uh, detailing all the facts that came out of it. Uh, elaborate on it for us. Uh, you know, the, uh, there were complaints brought to the public protector and, and accordingly, you know, they went in there and did a, a bit of research. And I mean, what came out uh, was shocking. In all fairness, it did support the PWC findings of late 2013 that looked at the skills audit in, in, the, in the organization. But the things that are coming out is that the um, acting COO was found to have uh, been fraudulent as regard a matric certificate. And then, you know, to add to just that incident, um, the then acting chairman, Dr. Ben Ngambani, in fact changed the requirements for a job to exclude the, the matriculation as, as a requirement. Um, but there were other scathing charges that, that salaries were, were awarded to people inappropriately. Uh, a lot of people pushed out with completely inappropriate procedures, uh, which added huge costs to the organization organization in terms of CCMA court action legal fees um, but coming back to the acting COO who seems to be impervious to these charges um, he also uh, I say awarded himself but in the period uh, received uh, in the single year received three salary increases from a salary of 1.5 to 2.4 million per annum. Now, you know, I think a lot of people would wish to receive that, um, but her findings uh, were really that she investigated this issue and all these issues were substantiated in her report. So it's a really very damning findings. You, you wonder what goes on in the heads of the, those who perpetrate these kind of nonsenses changing his matrix certificate, the chairman saying it's okay. Do they not think that they have thousands of others who are watching every, every step along the Do they think we're stupid or the people who work there are dumb? Well, you know, Alec, I think part of the problem with this story is that they almost seem to be disregarding of, of other opinion. Uh, I mean, the chairman, the current chairman of the SABC board is on record as saying the board is right behind him and of course we would want him to stay in this position irrespective of the report. Um, now, you look at it and think, for goodness sake, that can't be with charges of that magnitude. Um, but in fact, that is not the response. It is uh, politely, I suppose one could say it's counterintuitive. Uh, but the response has been as startling as the accusations. Do people just not listen? I think it is more a case of not, not um, about listening. I think it's a case of power. I think it's a case of when one feels powerful enough that you can be impervious to these charges. And I think when we look at the acting COO, if we look at the massive turnover in the board, he's the one person who survived. Uh, there was, in fact, a wonderful cartoon in one of the newspapers, um, and, and the punchline of it was the invincible Claudini. <laughs> Mm. And um, as uh, that survival skills, he seems to have plenty of. Uh, not that it's a credit, of course, to the organization or to him. But perhaps it's, it's a discredit to us as citizens of this country. Bobby Godsell has been talking uh, with James Matlatsi about becoming active citizens. Yes. And we, uh, if we're inactive citizens, then I guess this kind of thing will just continue and you'll get the public protector, yes. uh, bless her, making reports and exposing all of this and nothing happens. Yeah. I think the reason your, your point is so especially pertinent is that what we're looking at here is the national public broadcaster. It's not just some company, it, it is meant to be, you know, our national broadcaster. And, and we would expect them to conduct themselves appropriately and, you know, it, it really couldn't be further from the truth. So whose responsibility is it to make sure that the powerful are in check and follow the rules? 
Do you know, within that situation, in, in theory, of course, it is the chairman of the board and, and the CEO would have a, a particular um, realm of responsibility. I think the challenge we have to take into account with that is that we'd be naive to assume that there wasn't some political um, influence there. And you know that political influence was for the credibility of the reporting, for the betterment of the organization, for the benefit of the public, especially, let me add, with us heading towards an election, mm -hmm. um, then we would say that that political influence is being exercised appropriately. Um, but it really has been shown that they've had weak boards and so someone like the, the current and still existing acting COO um, has been able to exert an influence, a negative one I would suggest, over a long period of time now. Cynthia, so, yeah, it's interesting how the world is changing and developing and uh, with the technology that we have today we've seen when it gets beyond a tipping point as in the Arab Spring that quite radical things happen. Mm -hmm. Surely the sensible thing is to make sure it doesn't get to that tipping point, that people start behaving appropriately. But to get back to Gugs's question, how? How do you do it? How do you avoid How do you get people like this to act appropriately? I mean, he forges his matric certificate, gives himself three salary increases, writ a a attacked by the public protector who uh, is there to protect us, the public, yes. and yet it's water for ducks back. So how do you address this? Do you know, um, I feel like saying uh, it can be addressed easily, but there's a big but attached to that. Without leadership will and without leadership commitment, I don't think one can address this effectively. I think you can paper over it and you can have another little audit or another report by someone who would you know, lend themselves to a more favorable report. But I think that the papering over the cracks um, is all it would amount to. For me, it has to be driven uh, by leadership will and by leadership commitment of saying that is not how this company runs. We choose to run an ethical business. Mm -hmm. Voila. So Hopefully that's we'll see that that's the challenge. <laughs> An interesting challenge indeed. Cynthia, thank you so much for your time.